Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pokemongos podcast. We're reading the mongos about the Pokemon adventures. The Red Arc. That, that is what we did. We we read them. We read the mangoes. They were delicious. And I ate some mangoes. I smelt them. You smelt the mangoes. Yes, I I sniffed them and then I put them back because I do not like the taste of mango very much. But what I do like is Pokemon, and I like manga about Pokemon. So let's talk about what's going on. We got Red, our boy Red. Red is a very young boy. He's like 11. Unlike the memes, he is not 10. Well, that was just because Ash is. Everyone assumes Red in the games is 10 because Ash is 10, but he's actually 11, which is an interesting tidbit. Mm-hmm. I also kind of call bull on that because if they're, if they're all the same age, Green has some serious issues that, yeah, I know she actually does, but one of her issues is being incredibly inappropriate, especially for an 11-year-old. Oh, I just meant the ages of Red and Ash. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you have people who think that all the protags are 10, even though some yeah. of them are visually older, like, visibly old, like, uh, uh, Hilda and whatever the guy whose name. I'm like 80% sh- blah, 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 80% sure that none of them are actually 10. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe aside from, like, the, uh, Let's Go characters who look younger than Yeah, Tim. yeah, and then you have characters who are probably up into their 20s, like Wes from Coliseum and, um, the main character from Conquest. When he said Conquest, I got it mixed up with, uh, DX Scale of Darkness because he said it right after yeah, Coliseum. Yeah, and I'm yeah like, Michael, <laughs> Michael might be 10. Who knows? It's been a while since I played. He he can ride one of those, uh, those motor bikes. Yeah, but Ori's also, like, a wasteland and yeah. ca- parts of it are basically r- running on Mad Max rules, so... I like to imagine that he's just Pokemon Mad Max pizza delivery guy. <laughs> <laughs> we just need a cypher admin, like, with a guitar that shoots fire. Oh yeah. It's J. Jonas James blah blah blah. J. <laughs> Jonah Jameson versus Moped Pokemon Trainer Spider-Man pizza delivery guy. <laughs> oh my. So any- anyways, we read uh, the Red Arc, not the uh, manga adaptation of Coliseum. Yeah, that's really mm-hmm. hard to find. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some would say impossible. Uh, I would like to read it eventually, but, yeah, you know. Yeah, I-, I only have a couple chapters scattered here and there, and I- it's- there's like two different series. And they were- neither one of them were adapted into a volume, so. Oh. Huh. That would indeed be a rare treat, and I would love to be on board for that. But here we have the best-selling Pokemon manga. So it's like complete other end of the scale. It was yeah. not the first, and it's not the longest running. But it is the one with the most volumes and the highest selling. Well, it depends, because some people consider all of Pokemon Adventures to be one manga, while they consider uh, the Pokemon Hen manga to be uh, each generation is a different manga, if that makes sense. And they all have an... Uh- that's how I've seen websites split it up anyways. Eh, yeah, I know. Like, I, I've seen people talk about the anime as though the different, like, the ones with the different titles are um, different series entirely. But yeah. there seems to be some debate on how to consider it. Like, are they spinoffs of each other or what? <laughs> uh, just sequel series. It's like the same thing from going from original Gundam to Zeta Gundam. Mm-hmm. Or Dragon Ball to Z. Yeah. Except for that's an interesting case because the manga never actually made a difference. Z was just the next chapter. Uh (laughs) Like, literally, right as Dragon Ball ended. It's still Dragon Ball, it's just, like, the next one that came out. Anyways, Pokemon. Pokemon. (laughs) Okay, so, Volume 1. Volume 1. I do not have it on me because I lent it to a friend and I haven't seen them Ah, in Ah, well, do you have your notes? I have my notes. I don't know what half of them mean. (laughs) (laughs) Does anyone know what Pokeball doesn't open means? Um... No idea. Because usually Pokeballs, they yeah. open. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently one didn't open. Well, I mean, I I, I am kind of going through this, just... Oh, wait, I, I think I know what it is. Pokemon is like complete. You know the centerpiece in a Pokeball? Everything I've seen it contradicts itself because no one can decide if the Pokeball in the, the circle in the middle is supposed to be connected to the top or bottom half. <laughs> <laughs> the true. 
so it was probably a note on that, but I never kept track of if it was open on the top or bottom half. Because all the games open on, like, the top half, the circles on the top half mm-hmm. of the shell, but, like, on the back of literally every, almost every Pokemon trading card, it's on the bottom. And here, I'm looking at some of these, and on some of these, that latch doesn't seem to be here at all. <laughs> like, when yeah. there's the, the whole big row of Pokeballs being opened when Red falls against the computer in Oak Lab, there's not a single switch on any of those. When the exact previous page, when Red picks up Bulbasaur's Pokeball, there's a button on it, then literally two panels later, he picks it up and he shows it to Poliwhirl that's in its ball right then. There are no switches on, no buttons on either of them. Literally I... two panels later. I think that's more of like a less literal stylistic thing, just so you can see the Pokemon inside the Pokeballs, because that's a thing in that mm-hmm. Adventures. It's really cool to see them inside. Yeah, it's also cool that they can see each other from yeah. inside it. And so they're, you know, watching the action. Hmm. We finally have the answer everyone's been asking for. What's in the Pokeball? Except for I've been saying this for years. The Pokemon are inside Pokeballs. <laughs> Who would have known? Are, are you sure? I, I think I saw someone put their leftover lunch in a Pokeball before. Oh, um, when Ash was trying to capture Primate, um, it, it like whacked the ball or something, and it end up, uh, it ended up uh, catching one of the quote-unquote donuts in it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love donuts? Okay, so, right off the bat, with Volume 1, Red lives in a really small town. It's like this little tiny dot on the map, maybe 50 people at most, right? He's never met yeah, Blue, it's... and he's never met Oak, and he's never even been to the lab. Yet he's lived there his whole life. Yeah, it's kind of weird. <laughs> I mean, it says right there, if they don't know him, they should. Exactly. <laughs> Clearly, it's right. showing that Red can't take accountability for himself. Well, in, in the no. translation I'm reading, the uh, the more recent one, it says, everybody knows me in Pallet Town, and why not? Yeah. Yeah. Are you using the original Viz? I think um, so, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I actually couldn't find mine. <laughs> I was going to read it and compare, but... That's probably a good thing, because uh, the second edition volume I have in front of me... Oh, wait, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Unnamed friend <laughs> won't answer my calls yeah. for my Pokemon <laughs> comics. <laughs> well, through. we'll march over there and, you know, demand it back. Yeah, we'll wait. We'll wait. <laughs> well, yeah, for next time. So, yeah. why does the lab look yeah. abandoned? Especially when there are a whole bunch of Pokemon there, just waiting in their balls. I think Oak just went to the next town over, but because he's so old, it takes a long time. He's just an old man. Did they not have an idea for how old he's supposed to be when they first started the series? Because he's treated like this little old man, but then later on they established, oh yeah, Oak is like 50. That kind of makes sense. It kind of makes sense until you consider that the games had already given him a granddaughter who is probably around 16, which means that he was uh, he was 34 when he became a grandfather. Have you seen the fourth movie? There were probably some Celebi time travel shenanigans. Yeah, that's- but only in the show. <laughs> now, another question about Oak. Why was he keeping Bulbasaur separate from the others? They seem to indicate that uh, Bulbasaur uh, has only ever seen Oak, that he's the only human that Bulbasaur has ever seen. Isn't that animal abuse? Well, there's a lot of animal abuse in Pokemon, just that is for one point. Well, just yeah, but by Professor in general. Oak. We also don't know how old the Bulbasaur is, so it could have been, like, recently hatched. Could be. I mean, it could also be the last one left from when Oak did his whole you know, pick your starter. His grandson got one, then the other got stolen. That That's a really weird thing, because normally you pick your starter, and then your rival is like, I'm gonna be- pick the one that beats you. But here, it's the opposite. Yeah, and also, like, if this was after Green had broken into the lab and stole her starter, wouldn't she have just taken two of them? Well, Bulbasaur was apart from all the other Pokemon. Well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, if that was the case, that it's just the last one left. And it's just, you know, sitting on the table, like, when you go back in the game, and there's still one there. No one knows. So, we eventually learn that the reason Green stole 
Squirtle is because she felt kind of jealous that she was supposed to ha- she was from Palette and she was supposed to go on this journey, but she never got to because Ho took her. Uh-huh. So it could part have been like, we we know she's going to do some shady stuff, but maybe she felt only taking one because that's what of what would have happened anyways. Whereas uh, if she wasn't taken by the Ho, then she wouldn't have gotten multiple. So there was something probably psychological about only taking one. Could be, yeah. Like, she wanted to make the choice because that's what she felt okay, she was I, missing out I on. I looked it up and she says, One day I found out that two boys my age from Pallet Town got a Pokemon and a Pokedex from Professor Oak and started their training journeys. Which would mean that she would have had to have taken Squirtle after Red already picked up Bulbasaur. Yeah. So that would mean that that wasn't the last remaining starter. Unless it was the last remaining Bulbasaur. I figure more people are coming in there. So maybe it was the last remaining from a set, and someone else has the Squirtle that yeah. goes with them, and we just never hear about them. <laughs> Wasn't it that he saved all of them, and then that was just the one, like, the, they said Bulbasaur liked him, so take him. That's about it. I thought that was, like, it was nothing to do with, this is the last one. It's just, oh, there's a lot of these Pokemon, but this one likes you. Take Bulbasaur. Go. Or maybe, like, you know, maybe it was just newly hatched, like you said, and, you know, Oak had just received it or whatever. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really say that it was there for a while. Uh, it depends on how long Oak was on his little adventure we don't see. Yeah, it could be. Like, we we don't know how long it takes him to go grocery shopping. <laughs> well, he can book it to the next city on a bike that's far too small for him. Yeah, but, like, have you seen him trying to choose between 1% and 2% milk? <laughs> <laughs> Plus, he probably has to go to those, like, uh, home and garden stores, or, no, farm and feed stores, too. <laughs> or he just gets it from the Bulbasaur. <laughs> gets what from the Bulbasaur? The the feed. Or at least for the Pokemon that eat plants. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was the last one! I mean, the rest were turned into candy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um... Can we go back a little bit back in time to the very start? Uh, like, right on the first chapter, very early on, we have, uh... So, uh, Red is teaching the kids yeah. about Pokemon. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's interesting because this wasn't very long after the games came out. This was before the anime came out, too. Uh-huh. So, uh, Red explains what a Pokemon is, but what I'm getting at is, it's really impressive how they explained it fairly quickly, fairly easily. Oh, yeah, yeah. Strange creatures that live in the forests and lakes. Those are animals, no Pokemon. (laughs) It's just a dude dressed up as Bigfoot. (laughs) It's Bill. A good exposition there. I'm glad it didn't, like, a lot of... Stuff in general just has the problem of explaining something, then it explains it again. Like, I want to compare this to, uh, I haven't read it in over a decade, but, uh, the Electric Tele Pikachu uh-huh. has, like, uh, if I remember, it's like, what, half of a chapter of Red in a school, and the teacher's just boringly, dryly explaining what a Pokemon is? No, that's the... Is that a different manga? Yeah, no, that's not, that's not Electric Tail. Uh, I thought it was. No, we never see him at school. In fact, it's explained uh, in that series that Ash has a... It's like trainers are given time off from school to go on their journey. Oh, I thought it opened up with him at school and it's like... Uh, No, it it opens up... I don't think this part was ever officially translated, but it opens up with Pikachu getting rejected and running into the (laughs) town to, like, drink some electricity. The actual manga starts with the lights going off and on in Ash's house, and his mom telling him to go see what it is, and then he finds Pikachu, and yeah. Clearly my comparison on a manga I haven't read in over a decade is not very fair. (laughs) But point is, I'm glad they didn't take too long and too dryly explained it. (laughs) Before we get to Blue... Do anyone have any notes from before then? Yeah, um, there's a note saying that Pewter is west of previous location. It isn't, it's north. Um, Red doesn't know about badges, even though that's something everybody in the region should know. 
Um, the Graveler Trader in Brock's gym looks a lot like the Rocket Officer Tyson from the Johto episodes. Um, why couldn't Misty just recall her Gyarados? Okay, I oh. don't actually know where Blue comes in. He's, like, right at the start. <laughs> oh, okay then. I, I was confused when he got to Misty. And okay, I went, Whoa. there he is. Page 12. Ah, of yeah. course. Never mind. He's he's fighting the Mew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, this is when I have notes, but I didn't make a timeline in my notes. Yeah, I'm just going off my memory. And clearly we've seen that as very reliable. <laughs> <laughs> Answer me, worm! So worms are, uh, a thing. Yeah. I mean, didn't you see in that first chapter? In, uh, chapter 02 with Wormmon? Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with his trainer, Ken, he kicks, uh, Puplio? I was going to say I really like how they introduce Blue, but what I should say is, uh, I really like Blue in this manga. <laughs> because, uh, a lot of people, when they think about Blue, any version of Blue, they're heavily, uh... Influenced by Gary? Yeah, yeah. I was trying to think of the word. And I, I see so many debates about, uh, friendly rivals, even though Bianca, How, and Chiron are the best rivals. Uh, we need unfriendly rivals always. We've only really had two unfriendly rivals, you know, being uh, Silver and Hugh. Like, May wasn't even a rival. I mean, even then, Hugh was okay with you. He was just. But yeah, Blue is—he's kind of a jerk. But in like, you're you're playing a fighting game, and you say some quips to your friend. Uh huh. That—that's what Blue is. Yeah, he's, like, the Ken to your Ryu. Yeah. You know, you'll beat the living snot out of each other, but then, you know, you'll shake hands and smile. Yeah. What I find interesting here is, when Red meets Blue, uh, Red is the one who's more of a jerk here, and Blue's only yep. really rude because Red is being such, uh, he's inconsiderate. Yeah. Part of it is just him being young and naive. I don't think Red is, like, a bad person or anything. Yeah. But it's this really interesting conflict here. Uh-huh. Like, what are you doing? You almost had it! It's like, it makes him angry. Yeah. He also scares away the Mew, and if you scare Mew, you're bad in my book. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everything scares away Mew. You. you cannot catch the Mew. Well, aside from $50 controller DLC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or you could just go back, get, um, well, no, you can't get my Pokemon Ranch anymore, can you? I bought it, like, right before the eShop's close. Well, not the eShop, but whatever the Wii Shop channel is called. I think it's just called the Wii Shop channel. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly it. And, uh, Mew is good. Blue's introduction of how it's Red who starts the conflict rather than Blue, that's great. Blue says, uh, something really neat, which, before this, I listened to some other podcasts about these chapters. Uh, the the one that gave me the idea for this is The Ducks Book Club. They stopped after Volume 2. We are successfully farther than them. Kelly, why did you do this to me? I've waited months for the third volume episode. <laughs> but, uh, they pointed out how, how wise Blue is, because he says something like, Know your limitations? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he does say that. Know your limitations, otherwise you're only gonna hurt yourself or something like that. Mm -hmm. Very wise. Especially from an 11-year-old. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I want to say, like, they actually kind of look 11. In this art yeah. style. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of people don't say it's too simple, but I like the simplicity for the most yeah. part. Yeah, I do too. I like Mato's art. I think it's a shame that her wrist got hurt. During some of the battles, it's kind of confusing what's happening, but just mm -hmm. on more static frames, I just love looking at her uh, facial reactions. And also what looks, you know how, like, in some of, like, the GBA games, it has, like, the big sprite art, and then it slowly goes down into the normal yeah, sprite yeah. art? It's, like, somewhere in the middle of that. Professor Oak, on the tiny bike, and he is angry. <laughs> that was my full note. I just thought that was really funny. This is, like, the most angry we've seen Professor Oak. Yeah, well, he yeah. also did get, you know, crapped on by a Pidgey. Bulbasaur just goes into the gym, which means that it's wide open. They've never appointed another gym leader, even though Giovanni not only, you know, took off, but this place is 
been empty for ages. They're... <sighs> okay. Well, you see, gem leaders in this manga are really corrupt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them. But if you notice, the other three mentioned that they left their positions in order to join Team Rocket. Giovanni has a freaking bust of himself in there. Do do people know that Giovanni's the leader of Team Rocket? There's like a conversation of two random townies yeah. standing outside, and it's like, oh yeah, there's this guy named Giovanni. You see that bust in there? And Red just walks past is like, hmm? <laughs> Maybe Giovanni is his last name, and he got on with the lie that he's, he was just his twin brother. <laughs> you mean like in the Pocket Monsters manga, where there were two Giovannis at one point? Whoa. Oh, boy. Yeah, they were supposed to be brothers. And then one of them just disappeared and they never brought him up again. But yeah, this is the gym. Still closed, huh? They say Giovanni's been missing for a long time. Who's Giovanni? That gym leader there! Pointing to the bust. Hi guys, I'm Dobbs, top 10 Pokemon manga. We're reading the Pocket Monsters manga. There's only one of those. I'm gonna show like an image from every Pokemon manga in this entry. Look how weird it is. <laughs> no shade on Dobbs though. He he seems like a fine guy, but that one video just kind of annoyed me. Where he keep bringing up the Pokemon manga and he, in the same like top ten, on the same top number, it would use like three different manga to describe the Pokemon manga he's talking about. <laughs> Yeah, it gets me. I mean, I do love adventures, but I hate when people refer to it as the manga. Oh no, it's just people don't know that there's a difference between... I've seen so many people not know there's a difference between adventures and the comedy one with Clefairy. So, back to the red arc specifically of adventures. Uh, yeah. I have a story about the poster real fast. Oh uh, yeah? I was look. Okay, first of all, it's like barely bigger than one of the volumes, so it's not really a poster. But, uh, I was looking at it and trying to tell where I should hang it up. And I was looking at it forever, just being like, whoa, I I like this art. This art's good. It really is. It's a nice and then, cover. Yeah. And then eventually I hang it up. And then I start reading, and I'm like, whoa, this is good. Wait, wait, what? What? Red? Red chose a Bulbasaur and not a Charmander? What? And then I look <laughs> back at the poster, and the whole time Bulbasaur was staring me at the face. Red just guesses, it's like, wait, if it's got a bulb, and then he opens the window, which yeah. means the windows are unlocked, too. I mean, how do you think uh, Blue got in? What? Did they learn nothing in school about these creatures? Is there even school? Does school even exist in part one universe? Well, like, there, there's a school, but it's not in Pallet Town. <laughs> Yeah, that's like a Pokemon school. It's specific. Yeah. It's not like an actual school school. People's entire lives, especially as it's established in Palette, revolve around these creatures. You'd think everyone would know all of this stuff. That's like basic knowledge. Um, also, I want to go back to the Venomoth. Um, they bring up like the two like ideological kind of things there. That like Blue goes, oh, that's just another Venomoth. And actually, no, it's coming out here. Like up with the Kangaskhan, but Red's like, "Oh, poor Venomoth. We, that would have been good to have, and like you know, treat every Pokemon as special." They they bring that up just about now with the Kangaskhan. The interesting thing about that is what I was saying earlier is how Red is kind of arrogant and he's kind of rude, but he does still care. He he's a good boy, which is kind of like how your rival is in the game. You know, he's rude and arrogant, but he's not a bad person. Yeah. Red is the rival. People thought they were clever with these Pokemon Sun and Moon theories about you being the rival to how, but no, Pokemon Adventures did it early. Yeah. But then uh, then Red kind of chastises, you know, it, it, come on, you know it isn't really winning if your opponent's at a disadvantage. I mean, it's, one, isn't that the whole thing about types? But also... Blue didn't even realize that there was a hurt baby Kangaskhan in there. Also, Kangaskhan just kind of approached them, stood there while Blue attacked, and didn't do anything. Like, didn't try to retreat. It's because Kangaskhan really wanted mud on Blue, so he just sort of stood there, invoked Blue. She, all Kangaskhan are girls. Oh, sorry. 
Uh, and then what happened was Kangasan just sort of stood there, let Blue attack, then took video from like off in the bushes so that the Kangaskhan could be all like, Blue attacked me. Blue is evil. Yeah. <laughs> Oak refers to Red as my new protege. It's like, yeah, you kind of patted him on the back and said, go do stuff. Look, he has psychic powers. <laughs> You're not much of a mentor, Oak. My new protege, I have a task for you. Help me choose between 1% and 3% milk. <laughs> You know, it's funny, everyone um, makes comments about Oak and the player's mom, um, especially in the yeah. original games, because, let's face it, on the show, he and Delia are very close, like, they went on vacation together, yes. he got flustered when he asked why he was at the beach with her, and, uh, going back to one of the original <laughs> comics, like, before Adventures, it was, there was this gag comic. Um, Red catches them in the bushes together. Is that the one with Clefairy? No, no. This before that one. Oh. It was just whoa. a series of gag comics. There's like, uh, four coma, four panel comics. Yeah, I thought that's what it was. No, um, uh, Pocket Monsters is, um, a regular story. Like, it okay. has a storyline and everything. I-, I just thought it was, like, gags based off of it. Probably because the only thing I've seen from it is the, like, talking Clefairy. Yeah, yeah. Which is, this is the only manga to get referenced on the show, too. In the form of a movie Ash talked about seeing when he was younger. Doesn't it happen in, like, Advanced Generation when the Clefairy makes a cameo? Yeah, yeah. In Lights, Camera, <laughs> Action. <laughs> Professor Oak. Yes. I forgot what we were talking about with Referring him. Referring to Red as his protege, even though he's absolutely nothing. Just basically kind of pointed him in the direction of Verdi and Forrest and was like, Go get him, champ! Makes you question how much of a grandfather he's been. <laughs> Is he taking care of Blue at all? This <laughs> might make it better or might make it way worse, but I think it's implied that uh, Professor Oak has been watching him for, like, since he's growing up. Yeah. Like his parents are, who knows where. Yeah. I mean, he also does seem to know a lot about Green, so... Mm-hmm. Well, he was saying that's because he got involved in tracking her down after she was kidnapped, and because she was the age of his grandson. So, everyone in Pewter, if we're ready to... Yeah, yeah. My only note on this chapter, I don't remember a ton of it very well, but I just know that. Yeah. Angry Brock... <laughs> Rock has a face. They're chasing after a Pikachu. It also yeah, says yeah. Pewter City in the West, which I guess it is in the western part of the region, but it's just north of where they had been. So, <laughs> so yeah, they're able to identify this thing as a singular Pikachu, even though there should be a whole bunch of them running around. I mean, it's a city. You're going to get stuff like that. Well, keep in mind, in uh, Gen 1, Pikachu had, well, at least before Yellow, when it was 100% forest, but in the first two games, or three if you're in Japan, Pikachu only had like a 2% chance of appearing in Viridian Forest only. Yeah, but I know but th- I know that, but they're also trying to go for a more a realistic approach here. I don't know, but I think it's just implying there's a smaller Pikachu population. Yeah, true. And nobody seems to be willing to battle it until Red comes along. Yeah, like, he's the first one that even, like, thinks to battle it. Everyone else is just trying to use nets and whatever. But nope. All he does is use sleep powder. And then immediately catches it. I mean, at least Red is smart. He's using the cheese in Gen 1. (laughs) (laughs) OP sleep powder. Oh, it gets worse once we get to the final battle, but we can save that for later. Young man, you've saved us. That test was ruining our businesses. One little rat was ruining everything. You know, maybe you could put out some of your, like, I don't know, day-old bread or some produce that's starting to go soft. Try to, you know, train it to eat those instead of going after your stuff. There, or there have to be, like, specialty traps for, like... Yeah, if you have mouse traps. And then you drive them out to the countryside and let them go. There have to be special traps like that here for different types. Literally just a mouse trap. That's all you need. 
This is fat Pikachu, though, dude. It doesn't have a discernible neck. Mm, <laughs> this is true. Pikachu being a pest is a metaphor for the Pokemon anime. Yeah, the Dex entry shown in here says they are few in number and are exceptionally rare. Thus it says the Pikachu are believed to be highly intelligent. You just gave me, like, flashbacks to that one Pokemon movie I haven't seen yet where Pikachu talks. It doesn't really talk. I think people... Yeah. Um, misinterpret I, I think that. it's implied that Ash is just having a fever dream. Yeah, it's kind of like it's a way of symbolizing their bond, like showing that Ash can understand it. If you think me talking about a manga I haven't read in ten years is bad, you should hear me talk about a movie I haven't seen yet. <laughs> Probably be better, to be honest. Yeah, perhaps. Pikachu. So, this manga came out, like, the same month as the Pokemon anime. So this would have been a few weeks after the manga started. So do you think Red getting a Pikachu was influenced by the anime? I don't know. I think it was just because, you know, they already knew Pikachu was popular, because they did that poll about determining... At least this is what I've heard, that they did a poll determining what the most popular thing was, because they were going to go with Clefairy for the show. Yeah. And then Pikachu got it, so they were like, oh, okay, well, let's give our main character a Pikachu. So that would have been in production um, at the same time that this manga would have been been, plan bleh, been getting planned out. So I imagine it was basically just both the anime and Mato getting told, or Mato and Kusake getting told, hey, this is a popular Pokemon, work it in there. That's fair enough. I've only ever heard that uh, they were going to choose Clefairy, and then they thought, Pikachu would be more appealing for every audience, mm -hmm. but like I didn't know about that pool, so that's pretty interesting. That's this is what I've always heard. I, yeah. I've never seen a verification, but this is the reason why I wanted to have you on. You can just bring in interesting stuff like that. I just want to say I'm I'm glad you're here. <laughs> so, uh, Pikachu and the Mongo. He's pretty good. Like especially later on, if we want to move on to the actual gym battle. Yeah. Well, I, I had said in my notes, how does Red not know about badges? But here he just doesn't seem to know what the boulder badge is or what it does. And also, yeah. Red swears. At the <laughs> bottom of page 57, he goes, Well, sorry, you comically, what's that, Grolix? Is that what that's called? When it's supposed to be cursing, but it's just a bunch of random symbols. We are led to believe that Red is, in fact, calling Blue some rude stuff. I, I think... Red might know what badges are, he just doesn't know the names of the specific badges. He also didn't seem to know that it can boost the attack power. I mean, I didn't and know the manga had that ability. I mean, it's possible Blue was just, just like, oh yeah, yeah. it's like, you, <laughs> everyone knows you 2 plus 2 know? plus 4. It's like, yeah, it could just be trying to be, like, he's trying to be superior and everything oh, yeah. with taunting that information possible. everyone knows, but still. And one more thing, Brack is a rock Pokemon trainer. Your little electric mouse won't be any good against him. No, he won't be any good because most of those rock types are also ground types, not because mm -hmm. they're Wait. rock types. Hold on. Do any of them have a horn? <laughs> you know, though, from a purely... Um, realistic standpoint, I think that would be something, you know, until they brought in um, the ability Lightning Rod. From a realistic yeah. standpoint, I would think that would be um, something legitimate to bring up as a vulnerability. Um, the same with, like, if you were attacking, like, waiting until its mouth was open or something to attack the inside of the mouth, which wouldn't have the same kind of armoring. Unless you're, like, a uh, an onyx. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> like, does Onyx have innards, or is it just rocks? I don't know. Does Onyx have a rock tongue? How does his digestive system work? It just rocks. He eats rocks. <laughs> He's like the guy from NeverEnding Story. <laughs> Must be a real vintage here. So, we get to Brock, and... We get to, not just any Brock, mildly upset Brock. Yeah. <laughs> he really needs to go to the bathroom, but he just has to keep it in for the rest of the battle. He's very analytic of the kids that are coming in. Like, uh, no. He's judging everyone. 
that's actually a really nice aspect to him. Like, and the fact that everyone's just battling just to fight him, I don't think we see that anywhere else at all. <laughs> just here. There's like all this big hoo-ha about like, oh, you need to beat like all these rounds just to fight him. And every other team is just, Red just walks in and gets the match. <laughs> But before he d does that, though, before he gets to the gym, he goes to the Pokemon Center. Our center was damaged yesterday by unknown vandals. We'll reopen when our machines are running again. Wouldn't Brock have closed the gym and relay, you know, delayed the um, match until later, just out of knowledge of that? Look, if someone's coming in from the other town and they really want to fight him, that just gives Brock a free win. Yeah, still, it's like it seems like that would have been done out of courtesy. That that also seems completely out of character, but it's funny. I don't care. It's also so the Pokemon Center has the only uh, healing st uh, stuff in the entire uh, in the entire town. Okay, like I said before, the guy with the graveler looks like Tyson from the anime. Um, he's a rocket agent uh, during the Red Gyarados episodes. Yes, I definitely know who that guy is. <laughs> Me too. I don't know, but something about his design just makes me feel really uneasy. Well, yeah, that's because, uh, in addition to looking like this guy, the Graveler Trainer, Tyson also looks like a like the median step between Gary and his grandpa. Yeah, that's exactly. Which exactly. does bring up some uncomfortable questions, but that would be for <laughs> talking about the anime. Red has a has the time to duck out of the gym um, after fighting that guy. But he doesn't have time to run to the store, pick up some potions? No potion run. It's a Nuzlocke. <laughs> well, you can heal in a Nuzlocke! <laughs> Not if you're really- a... Full hardcore mode. No healing items. What, you heal your Pokémon? <laughs> Do you also eat at uh, Weenie Hut Juniors? <laughs> I love how Pikachu's just being all acrobatic. Then it gets slightly bonked on the head. Oh no, the Pokemon took the full brunt of the attack! Yeah, Pikachu just dodging everything. Stick Maligi yeah. out real far. That's one of my favorite panels. It's just, he just doesn't care at all. <laughs> he's just like, nope, 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 nope. He doesn't even want to fight. He's just, oh, I'm going to dodge everything, because I don't care. And I'm going to have a fun time. I don't have an issue with this specific panel, but there's one thing I want to say. Probably the worst part about this manga is the battles. It's kind of confusing what's going on a lot of the time. Yeah. Mm. I, I hear it gets better, though, in that term. It's very cluttered. And it's, like, not the only manga to do that. If you've ever read, like, uh, Masame no Shiro's original Ghost in the Shell manga, it's a similar situation there, where at the start it's kind of hard to keep up with the action until later on. Like, I, I do um, reactions to death battle, and sometimes it's hard for me to keep up with what's going on in the fight. Well, the difference is those are animated, while, well, like, yeah. my two examples are manga. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people say they really want an, an anime adaptation of Pokemon Adventures, and it's like, I don't really, I don't really get that for the most part. It's like, the book's right there, the faces are great, I, I love this. Yeah, yeah. Except for the fights. I'd love to see the fights animated so I can tell what's going on some of the time. <laughs> Especially with that, like, fusion of the three legendary birds. We'll get to that later. Oh, oh boy. I, I just, like, we're, we're coming up in just a couple of days on the 17th, on the 20th anniversary of the second movie, and I'm just like, um, okay, so what would happen if that monstrosity happened in that movie? Well, I, I feel that the harmony can never be restored. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty amazing. I think it would become the harmony. <laughs> so in the panel directly before the you okay, we have Gyarados, uh, or not Gyarados, Onyx, big snake thing. <laughs> we have Onyx looking really, really long, and it's made up of like twice the rocks it should be. You know, that's really unexpected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Pikachu manages to defeat it with an electric attack, which is something that should never, ever happen. I mean, yeah, okay, a Pikachu could beat an Onyx, you know? Uh, tackle, e tackle, even, tackle. Even back in that gen before you had, like, Iron Tail and stuff, you, you know, you still had, like, Quick Attack and Swift and all of that kind of stuff, but st we still had, you know, Electric having no effect on ground. Like, did they just mm -hmm. think it was a plain rock type? 
or something when they wrote this? No, I think it just doesn't want to be like as game realistic. It's kind of trying to be kind of life realistic, but not at all. And also just, you know, help the protagonist out a bit. Kind of like how in Pokemon Go there's no actual immunity, it just does far less damage. Yeah. Yeah. There's something else you're missing here. Onyx has a horn. <laughs> It's on. It's pointing backwards. It's more like a crest than a horn. Aim for it. <laughs> it seemed to aim for the body because Onyx freaking explodes. I mean, doesn't it also explode in uh, Col- not Coliseum, uh, Stadium? I don't remember. I just played the mini games. <laughs> <laughs> Although ironically, Coliseum does reuse some of the models from. Pokemon Stadium, too. So, before we move on from Brock, I just want to take a quick second to talk about this version of Brock versus other versions of Brock. Uh Uh, Anime Brock is... It's weird, because when someone says Brock, the first thing they usually think of is Anime Brock, and he's nothing like any other version of Brock. Right. But then this version isn't really like... Uh, like him either. I mean, in um, yeah. Leaf Green and, you know, Fire Red Leaf Green, the um, oh, Fame Checker, where it gives all like little tidbits about different characters, um, yeah. they tell you that Brock is usually very serious, but if you get him laughing, it's hard to get him to stop. I don't think that kind of aspect was ever brought up again, and he seems like really lighthearted and easygoing in pretty much, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just because that's really just applying to him when he's younger and then you know three years later he's matured more and become not nearly as serious but he seems more relaxed in like um the heart gold soul silver and uh pretty much any appearance since i will say that pokemon masters kind of seems to be going on the less serious brock but not like full anime brock right they see he he's He's wearing his um, Heart Gold and Soul Silver outfit, too. Video Game Brock is somewhere in the middle of Brock from the manga and Brock in Pokemon Origins, I'd say. Yeah, and, like, I know, like, anime Brock is a lot more lighthearted and stuff, but he's he's not afraid to get serious at all. Like, um, when he found out about Damien um, bragging that he had abandoned this Charmander... Brock went over and hit him. Well, not really hit him. Like, picked him up by the collar. But he he was gonna absolutely go to town on this kid because of that. It was, it was awesome. And he would have been well within his rights to do it. I'm sorry, what? How old do you think Brock is? I know they've said that anime Brock is 15, but in here he actually seems younger than that. He seems like maybe 13. I was gonna say, like, 14 maybe. I think it's also the art is kind of softer here. Yeah, because all all the characters are, they're not quite chibi art, but they are sort of... Yeah. Halfway between full an art and pixel art, as I said earlier. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> He's also a bit too ripped to be like 11. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, there's Kiwi, and he's, he's about... How old is Kiwi again? Where he's like he turned out to be something like thirteen. Um, from Sun and Moon, the fire trainer. Oh, okay. The way we were pronouncing it made it sound it was like the letter Q and the letter A. Kiwi, isn't that how you say it? I've never actually watched the Sun and Moon series, so. Uh, the I... dub pronounces it Kiawe. Kiawe, okay. Okay, I I know who you're talking about now. Because he looks, he he looks like an adult in the games. Yeah. And then you see him in the show, and he's like, you know, up to adult characters' shoulders. <laughs> he could just be really short. But he's like, he's in the class with all the other kids. So. Oh, I thought you were talking about Brock. No, no, no. Brock but is yeah. also pretty short when you look at him next to the other characters. Like, you know, he's taller than Ash and Misty, but. If you want to get into that, Pokemon sizes. Yeah. I'm not going to open that can of worms. Yeah, that is a can of worms that is constantly changing size. And that's just the can, where you see the worms. Are we done with Brock talk? I am. 
I just want to say, before we move on from Brock, one last thing. His Organization 13 OC is named Brock's. <laughs> <laughs> so next on the agenda is Bill Zafuri. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have any notes about Misty. That's just the next thing. Bill the Furry. Yeah. And you're seen, but we won't see him until a couple of story arcs from now. Wait, was, uh... Oh, you seen as the guy from Crystal that's obsessed with Sweet Coon? Okay. I didn't hear the name in general, so I thought you meant N. No, no, no. Okay, you seen. Or just the entire Reverse manga. <laughs> no, that was more like Digimon Frontier. I don't know, they still seem like fur- they seem more like furries. I don't know. Oh, uh, so, shall we move Anyways, on to Misty? Anyways, wait, was Misty before or after Bill? She's directly after Brock. Okay, yes, Misty. So, okay, so if Gyarados is already her Pokemon, why couldn't she just recall it? It's never brought up that there was anything that changed about it. It was really angry. <laughs> It, it's the Argas. <laughs> it was foreshadowed many years ago. <laughs> so, Hydro Pump does absolutely nothing. It only makes Bulbasaur happy. And. <sighs> does that say something about how much Red is giving his Pokemon water? Um, uh, she says, huh? Is that Pokemon smiling? <laughs> no way. No water attack's gonna work on a grass Pokemon. Red, that's not how it works. Wait, hold on. Is this during the first time they see the Gyarados, or is this, this like is the during time. the gym battle? Okay. Okay, I was a little bit confused for a second, sorry. And so here they do a double battle, even though that wouldn't be a thing until, well, the show did it again in the Orange Islands. Um, and then they had to wait another full gen. For the games to catch up with it. And then VGC rules would always use double battles until the end of time. So, um, Misty has Staryu use Bubble Beam against Gyarados. That is not gonna do much. It doesn't know Maybe the bubbles are to distract Gyarados and to calm it down. Well, no, because it's against, uh, it's when she teams up with Red. Vine Whip! Ooh. Bubble Beam! I'm just imagining Gyarados being like, ooh, pretty bubbles. Now, because Red is able to capture Gyarados, then something uh, would have happened, I guess, to remove Misty's, um, I guess, ownership of it. Uh, so that could have been why she can't just recall it. But they never actually tell you that. <sighs> Is there any other reference points for something like this, aside from Coliseum and DX? Uh, aside from what? Coliseum and DX. Uh, I don't think there is. Like, do we know what happens if you ha you catch a Pokemon? You uh, take it out of the ball first, because I'm not a monster. But when the Pokemon's out of the ball, you destroy the po Pokeball. What happens? Didn't that happen um, with one of Jessie's Pokemon? Yeah, it was It was her dust ox, wasn't it? Uh, she was trying to tell it to leave, and it wouldn't, so she broke its Pokeball. I think part of it is that Gyaradoses are just usually angry and attacking stuff naturally. Uh-huh. So it, while there's like some control that a Pokeball gives you, it's not like... Completely overriding free will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's more of just like a, I guess a soothing agent. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Now the Rangers, on the other hand, that's brainwashing. <laughs> it's. I know they say it's like extending your heart and everything, but we we all know that's a pile of turds. Come on. Yes, I too uh, extend my heart when I'm like. Uh, go watch There She Is, and then they don't. And then I extend my heart by uh, tying up, up in a chair and forcing them to watch a 20-minute short film. <laughs> go watch There She Is. It's really good. So, what were we saying? Well, continuing with Misty, they take, um, you know, then they go to the Pokemon Center, 
And Misty doesn't know, uh, at least Red acts like Misty wouldn't know. That's Professor Oak. He's the world's leading expert on Pokemon. But she doesn't say anything about, oh, I know that, or act impressed or anything like that. Even though this guy is world famous. Well, you you think that gym leaders generally have a large amount of power, and is uh, Cerulean City that far from Pallet Town? Nothing's really that far from Pallet Town in that in the whole area. That's true. So you you think it's possible that they might have met before at some point? Yeah, but um, Oak doesn't seem to know who she is either. Or at least oh, he doesn't really? say anything okay. to her. I just like how the data for Gyarados says description atrocious. No wonder he's so angry all the time when people are treating him like that. <laughs> so, are there no other criminals in this world? Because someone has kidnapped a Pokemon and com it comes back all violent. They just kind of assume that it's Team Rocket. I mean, they turn out to be right, but that's because of dramatic license. That's because they didn't steal a Squirtle. Well, you see, it's not just Team Rocket. Two years later, you also have Team Rocket 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> no, that was Electric Tail of Pikachu that you had Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> I have, I, I, I've still never seen the movie that was actually called that. It was like Breaking Neither 2, have Electric Boogaloo, and I've never, I've never seen Breaking 1 either. <laughs> so, uh, where were we? We're getting on too many tangents, I'm sorry. On Mount Moon, just to your east, there is reported to be a Moonstone. A stone, they say, that is able to boost the power of a Pokemon enormously. Um, so is the implication here that it's a normal evolution stone, or could you make it a held item? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they do use it to evolve something. So, most of Misty's Pokeballs have an S on them. Also, by the fact that she is carrying around Gyarados in a ball, that would mean that Red would have had to trade her for it. Wait, what's uh, Misty's Japanese name? Kasumi. Okay. Then I thought it was started with an S for some reason, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe she's just really bad at spelling and thinks that's how you spell Cerulean. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it's like the the GS ball is just a sequel to the S ball <laughs> or uh, in Sinnoh how when you uh, throw a Pokeball you can put those little things on it to make the little designs pop out maybe she just didn't have enough money for any other letters aside from S <laughs> <laughs> oh ball capsules I love you so bring them back yeah. Dex, it would have been worth it if we had those back. <laughs> so Team Rocket is crawling around all the, the Mount Moon and everything, and yet two kids can just wander in, sneaking through the tall grass. Which is, you think, where they would have the most guards needed, right? In the tall grass, because that's where everything lives. Yeah, but you see, Team Rocket are the same type of people to complain about, uh... Random battles? Yeah, true. Even though they stand in one place and just look around. So I guess this fits with the game, but still. And of course, here on page 91, we have, Is that a Pikachu? Ain't Mickey Mouse. I mean, Pokemon, the anime, Sun and Moon, is now being played on Disney Channel, so... All hell are mousy and over the overlords. In Oros, they have, um, High Skitty. I'm just putting that out there. There is a Hello Kitty parody in the Pokemon world called High Skitty. Unfortunately, we never see it. Wait, what is the, uh... Stuffle? Is, is Stuffle the hand puppet Pokemon? It's not a hand puppet, it's a plush doll. But yeah, it kind of has a mouth like a hand puppet. Yeah. Oh, I was thinking of, uh... There is a... There's this, uh... The Japanese Pokemon YouTube channel has a series of Pokemon puppet videos. Oh, yeah, 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 and I've it's, seen And it's literally a hand puppet, yeah. So, uh, Stuffle. Are, are you ready for the office comedy, Angry Stuffle? <laughs> oh, yeah, it is a red panda, huh? Allegedly? 
When it first came out, I kept hearing it was a red panda, but now I can't find any sources on that. Well, it kind of looks like one. Yeah. Although I kind of hope it isn't, because that's for a red panda Pokemon, which red pandas already look like Pokemon. Yeah. That's kind of weak. <laughs> Although I, I remember um, that someone was saying about, like, you know, we, we, we all know, you know, there's Pokemon that are just not very far removed from their animal counterparts like Tauros is just oh it has two extra yeah. tails and th then you have Toucan in which is just a, a Toucan <laughs> and someone goes oh no uh, this this particular Toucan is really angry that's not how they worded it but we are keeping a rating on this <laughs> I mean t you see Toucans aren't canon Toucan is <laughs> I saw a great but, comic like, someone did of, um, because you know how two cannon heaps up its beak? Yeah. I saw a great comic someone did of pouring some uh, popcorn kernels in there and it just pops them. <laughs> 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 so I named mine Popcorn. So they they took a bull and gave it two tails. Imagine a red panda with two tails in Pokemon. They need to make a red panda Pokemon, they need to make it good, and they need to put it in the Pokemon Adventures manga so we can get to it in 900 years. <laughs> they need to make a gray parrot Pokemon, I'm just saying. Yes. Red pandas, gray parrots, put them in the manga so we can get to them because we're not even past volume one yet. Oh no. Oh golly, yeah, okay. So, on 91, we have Ain't Mickey Mouse. Then we turn the page, 92, well, if it isn't Tom Sawyer and little Becky in the cave. So, I have to wonder, at the time that this was initially released, were, was there supposed to be some doubt as to who this commander guy was? Because they don't introduce him until later, and, you know, he's got a hat, so there's kind of plausible deniability that this is Koga from the game. Although he does have his ninja gauntlets and everything. So was there supposed to be a question put in the in the readers' minds about this? Like, is that Koga? Or are they just supposed to know that it is? I'm going to go the opposite direction, and it's more like, for people who haven't played the games, it's mysterious. So Koga then just kind of sticks a needle into Rhyhorn's plates. It's like not even in a soft spot or like a bend in the armor with like a joint or anything. It just directly into the place. How is a needle going to do that? How how would it's really the needle sharp. break? It's a ninja needle. <laughs> That's how. It doesn't have to be logical. Ninjas can do whatever they want. It's it's confirmed. And then Pikachu is still able to affect it with electricity. Uh she's OP. So Koga says, you think we remember every little Pokemon we experiment on? Here's the thing about that, though. Misty is a gym leader. You'd think stealing a fur Pokemon would be something they remember. Especially by another gym leader. Also, she has, like, a really rich house. Like, yeah. They would, they would know. Yeah. Like, oh, you'd think they stole something of value from that house. Like... There would be a lot of valuables there. Maybe she was out and about and they just took it then. Yeah. Part of it might also be uh, he does remember, but he's just taunting him. Could be. He makes this yeah. weird gesture when he does it. He puts his hand up to his ear doing like an I can't hear you gesture. And it doesn't make sense. So I'm wondering if he said something different in Japanese. Or if it's just like he's just being weird. <laughs> or maybe it's like it would make sense in Japan, because the hand gesture would make sense for, you know. Hand gestures mean different things in different cultures. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not the translation, it's the actual gesture that is lost. But I don't know what that gesture, like, if it does actually mean anything different. That's the thing about getting us people, us uh, gaijins, reading the manga. <laughs> So, when Staryu attacks, one, Misty doesn't give a specific attack, she just says, Staryu, attack. Um, it seems almost like its jewel is spitting the water out. Like, it's, I don't know, it looks like it kind of moved its jewel aside to spit water out. Hmm. Or maybe, or like it's coming from the uh, area around the jewel. <laughs> like, not the plating, but just directly around it. 
<laughs> I can't really explain it. I still have no comment. Yeah. So then, Misty gets thrown against a wall, and she gets knocked out, despite the fact that the only part of her body really shown to be impacting the wall is her butt and possibly her right elbow. I have this theory that in Pokemon, gravity is just less. <laughs> that would be interesting. I like I've, actually, that. I, I've actually heard like a scientific explanation of how that would have to be the case. Now, I haven't been on Tumblr since The Purge, but um, if Scientific Pokedex is still on there, then check them out. So, yeah. Um, Rhydon is basically squishing Pikachu, and then Pikachu is able to attack it from under the foot. Yeah, so it, it was just standing there like that then. Like, I could see it, you know, doing that, you know, holding that position to be threatening and everything, but still. And then Koga has a really awkwardly phrased line here. Where are you flying, Pikachu? Out of control, perhaps? <laughs> yeah, this whole thing is just... The it's the balloon that? Pikachu. Somehow, Pikachu brings down a huge boulder. So it's just out of nowhere. Yeah. No one knows where it comes from. Yeah, so then I'm wondering if um, if Koga taking his hat off was supposed to be the big reveal or something. <laughs> the reveal is the, the the hat's not a part of his head. <laughs> I thought we wouldn't have that until third gen. <laughs> so, then when Misty wakes up, she punches Red in the face for getting her dirty. Yeah. I, I don't even think that. I think it's just because she's holding on to her. Could be. Like, she's carrying her and like, oh no, you're touching me. Well, no, because she looks at her hands at first. Yeah, I know, but then he says, who do you think you're groping? I think that's where she finds issue. D does she say that in the other translation? Yeah. Oh, yeah, what... okay. Okay, th yeah, I, I see that translation now. I'm covered in dirt, and who do you think you're groping? <laughs> so she is genuinely looking at her hands and seeing all the dirt. But it's like, she didn't, like... How did she expect she would get out of there, then? That he would just leave her there to wake up? She would drag her along the floor. I think it's more the combination of both, rather than just the dirt. So, the thing is, neither one of them seemed very concerned that she got knocked out, which would indicate some sort of head injury. Both of them just kind of treat it like it was a minor annoyance. She just simply fainted. Yeah. Part I mean, Red's so used to being blacked out. Yeah, true. I like the part here. <laughs> Whoa, you didn't tell me this was a costume party! Oh, shut up. What's your next notes, either of you? Oh, my next note skips ahead to Ratata. So I I, okay. uh, I skipped the whole Misty part. I, I skipped that too, not because I, I, I like what they did with it, with Red being all like, eh, where's the gym leader? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's Misty. What? Girls can be gym leaders too. Whoa. Whoa. I want to say that, like, I, I like that section. I like Red metaphorically being punched in the face. But also, there's not really much I could add. It's really straightforward. His, his line the night before, there's a whole mansion full of cute maids for me to ask out. Red? That's illegal. <laughs> I don't care if you're the one asking them out, it's still illegal. Yeah. Here's the thing. Red's game is so bad that to have a chance, he needs a whole mansion of girls to ask. <laughs> Kind of like in King of the Hill, where um, uh, the one who talked real fast, Boomhauer, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where he always had to have, he always seemed to have like a different girl at his house, and then they like followed him to find out his secret, and it was just him talking to every girl he met. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I do we have any other notes on Misty or? Um, not really. I guess it's just kind of uh, she doesn't really communicate very well. Otherwise, she would have just talked to Red instead of... Because at the table, she's all like, can I talk to you? And then she never actually addresses the point. 
and then she would rather attack him in his room and just kind of whirl yeah. everything around instead of actually saying anything to him or sending him a message. And then later in the gym, she has uh, Starmie attack him directly in order to get her point across. I thought you knew how I felt about us as a team. I just knocked you down, but Starmie wasn't enough at Mount Moon. Don't you get it? We have to get real or they'll flatten us. Like, yeah, he's not going to get it unless you tell him like you were right now. First of all, uh, Red was, from what I remember, kind of uh, procrastinating on training. A little bit, mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah, that was part of the issue. But also, uh, something kind of easy to forget here is uh, Misty is a child. Yeah, she's maybe just a year old. And, now. yeah. yeah. So I think it's fair that she want to be the best at communication. Yeah, but still, there's a difference between being yeah. immature at communication and just being immature. And I mean, I know technically she would be both, but at the same time, you would think she would, like, she, she has all these people around to support her. you think she could say, like, how do I tell him this? How do I tell him how important this is? I, I think it just shows that she has some trouble with communication in general. Yeah, maybe. I mean, she breaks down crying because he doesn't understand this, but, yeah. yeah. I mean, I have met people who are like that. Yeah, true. Also interesting uh, kind of quirk here. Um, when he's leaving, on one panel he has a hobo bindle, and w- then it's gone. <laughs> and now we get to Bill. Actually, I have one more thing about Misty. Yes? <laughs> uh, briefly, uh, the one thing I find interesting about Misty is she's the one character I found who's closer to her anime counterpart rather than her video game counterpart. Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't, I don't have any. Yeah, I don't think anime Misty would um like attack someone at night or. Yeah. I think they're very different characters still, yeah. but it's like the one character where I felt like they took more from the anime rather than I don't know like if it took directly from the anime, but like went in a similar alternate direction yeah and then um i think they also kind of got from her demeanor in the games um the like whole miss misty or lady misty is what they call her um because in the games she's kind of they call her the tomboyish mermaid but she's also got kind of a um politeness to her Mm. yeah definitely she's not the you know akane tendo like she is on the show (laughs) or she was before togepi got involved so now we get to the moment we've all been waiting for. Bill! 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 Fur! Bill! 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 Bill. <laughs> I was gonna say FurCon 2019. <laughs> now question, is he named after Bill Gates, or is he named after Bill Nye? I don't think Bill Nye was quite that popular yet. No. Yeah, he was. He was like, um, he was like early 90s. Oh, wait, no, never mind. I was thinking of, first of all, localization names is a thing that slipped my mind. So yeah, Bill Nye would have been popular in 98. Is that when Pokemon came out in America? Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I remember when I was growing up, I was always I thinking, you know, I hear all this stuff about Bill Nye, but I don't get that channel. So I have Beekman's World, which is still pretty good. I'm leaning more towards Bill Gates, though, because computer yeah, system yeah. making. Speaking about just Bill as a character, the show really did a number on him. They made him this... Um, like, if he distinguished guy when in the games, like, he says he doesn't like fancy stuff, and he's wearing a cravat on the show. Wait, what? what's what's the accent they're going for in the manga? Um, like, Deep South. Because um, he's okay. from uh, Johto, like, specifically yeah. um, Goldenrod, which is supposed to be Osaka. So, uh, are you familiar with, Adam- with Azumanga Daya? I know about it. I don't know the characters or anything, though. I was going to say, there's a character who gets called Osaka by her classmates because that's where she's from. And she has kind of that same kind of Deep South voice because that's the same kind of image that, you know, that America tends to have of the Deep South, of kind of slow-going country folk. Although, although, um, also with the added thing of that they're very money-oriented. So it's like, hey, you making money? Like, as, like, a greeting thing, and uh, I, I don't recall if that's something that's actually used in Osaka, it might be, but, um, 
Anyway, though, that's the because that's the image that Japan has of Osaka and that kind of yeah. district around it. Um, that's usually how that accent gets translated. So it, because Jodo wasn't a thing yet, they would have had to have had that in the original Japanese version that he was speaking in a Kansai accent. Yeah. This here Pokemon transporter don't run no better than a Metapod and Molasses. Fixing this just one big pain in the... <laughs> Oh, double dang! Yeah, I kind of remember if I'm I'm kind of disappointed because I was gonna make a joke, but uh, for some for some reason I couldn't remember if he was Southern or Australian, and I think someone else here would know something about that. <laughs> I'm like, this is not what it is. Okay, so this entire section is basically lifted from the fly, and yeah. he's a Radita. Mm-hmm. So. There's no way to get out from the inside. Does this also mean that in that pod, for... Oh, let's see. How long does it say? How long does it say that he was in that form? Uh, Well, for as long as it was, does that mean that there was a human body with a ratata head in the other tube, unable to get out? The real question is, could it be captured in a Pokeball? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I think Red's just able to carry around all those Pokeballs. He says that they're heavy. Is it heavy or is he just weak? Um, he says, I got so many Pokeballs, I can't carry them all, as one falls off his belt. If I work so hard to catch them all, I just can't leave them behind because they're so heavy. Or I can't just leave them behind because they're so heavy. Doesn't it? He's Bill. He has a computer system. Yeah. Maybe it's not working right now. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it requires human hands. <laughs> and then Red's just sneaking up on the unusual Radata. I guess we're supposed to assume he just sees it from behind. <laughs> because he says something's not right about it. And so then he creeps up on... Then, uh, then Bill turns around. But Red only freaks out about a Pokemon that talks! Like, yeah, that's the least strange thing here. Wait, Bill's face has, uh, like, Radita elements on it, right? Yeah, it has, yeah, it uh, like bug people. teeth, like whiskers ears, and, stuff. and whiskers. Okay. So that's less weird than if it was literally just a human head. Yeah, <laughs> less weird. The little thing here, though, does Radita have vocal cord? Could be Bill's. Could be, yeah, because we don't, the way the style is drawn, we don't really see if it has the neck there, too, but. It also depends on if, uh, in Adventures, do they, do the Pokemon just make animal noises, or do they say their names? Both. Okay, then Radita would have to have some sort of vocal cords. I guess, or it might just be, like, uh, you know, um, there's some animals we named, like, the Whippoorwill, because it makes a sound like Whippoorwill. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the actual cry, but that's what its cry sounds like to people, so. Like, it sounds like it's saying that word. Or singing that word. I, just, I wish I could remember what one sounds like, because now it's kind of making my point drive into the dirt. But, you know, it could be like that. First person to cosplay Bill will get my approval, probably. <laughs> that's yeah. a challenge. He's so small, though, even if he does have vocal cords... He wouldn't be able to make much noise. His lungs aren't very big to project sound. Okay, but have you considered Alvin and the Chipmunks? I don't think logic was the deciding factor in how they would sound. I'm doing kind of like the whole looks into the camera like they're on the office sort of look right now. (laughs) Like, did Bill consider he could be a national sensation (laughs) based on singing as a Radita? Well, so, um... They did something really um, uncomfortable with his accent here by spelling it out. If and you want to stop a flying Pokemon, first thing you do is paralyze its wangs. Jeez, he has multiple wangs. <laughs> he uses them for mobility. It's like a score all over again. He flaps them around. <laughs> I mean, I know it's. I know it's that we're going for a certain rating stop. here, but uh, I don't care. And they used it in the book. Ergo, it's canon. All right, so 
There was another thing that was funny where he keeps saying something like, I forgot what it was, but it's like, watch out for that fry. What? A fry? Oh, no, it's a fire. A fi- yeah, what was the thing he was confusing fire for? Far. They saw a thing, but oh, yeah. they saw an emu breathe fire. How far did it breathe? No, not fire. Fire! <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's the one. I don't know why that one made me laugh more than the other one. <laughs> so, Bill has to have a phone there, right? And this He has a computer. Yeah, so couldn't he have communicated with someone else to just come help him? He tried to, but when they saw his Radata face, they fled in horror. <laughs> Wait, no, they saw the other. They saw the Radata head on human body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they get there and they just see this creature in the tube. This is why Officer Jenny doesn't exist in the Pokemon manga. They have to deal with stuff like this. <laughs> oh no, that's how Team Rocket took over the area because um, all the police officers saw that and just kind of noped out of there. Bill, they turn Bill back to normal, and then they talk about Evie, right? Uh, no, Evie's not until like, we get to Erica. No. No. Oh, I thought the- who's the one breathing fire then? I thought it was the Evie. Yes, but that's not until we get to Erica. No, I, I meant Bill told Red about the Evie, yeah, right? Yeah. So, Bill tells Red about a fo- a Eevee that breathes pretty far. <laughs> well, no, he doesn't do that here. He does that again with once Erica is brought up. Or once Erica gives Red the... Here's a demonstration of how they kind of mix the show and whatever else. Although this had to have predated the show at least a bit, because they had to have planned out several chapters at a time. Um, but when yeah. Red is showing them the ocean, Bulbasaur goes, Bulba! And, uh... Polyworld goes, Rrr. All right, so on the SSN. Yeah, which here is a cargo ship. So we meet Lieutenant Surge on the SSN. Surge is a boomer. <laughs> yes, he is evil. He is whining that the Pokemon Club won't let their uh, Pokemon become big and strong and instead are keeping them weak with participation trophies. First off, though, we have to talk about the Pokemon fan club, because that has one of the most impressive things that I have ever seen in this series. Although, first off, when um, when Red meets the president of the fan club, now let's have a look at what's in those Pokeballs, eh? And he grabs Red under the jacket. But there, show me, show me, cut it out! That second part is just a dust up. You just see, like, dust clouds. Yeah. This man is extremely inappropriate. Yeah. So then, lad, you'll never find a more devoted gaggle of Pokemon lovers than in this room. Take a look, this newsletter says it all! And the headline is, We Heart Pokemon, A Case of Poke Love. That's the last bath I'll take with my tentacle. Now, in the original Viz print, it said a shocking case of Poke Love. Yes. And we see, like, a contrite-looking woman with her hair in a ponytail. Later on, near the end of, I think it's Crystal, we see her again when there's the radio broadcast out across everywhere. And she, uh, it shows, like, various people listening to it in different situations. She's in the bath, and there's a smiling tentacle next to her. Wait, doesn't the thing say it's the last time she's going to do that? Obviously not. I think she must have had a change of heart. Yeah, heart. (laughs) They heart Pokemon, after all. Yeah, maybe she's the proverbial fisherman's wife. (laughs) She's more like the fish's wife. No, um, is a painting that, um, let's just say is going to be inappropriate to discuss further. Okay, so Pokemon Fan Club. Uh, Red just leaves his Pikachu with the Pokemon Fan Club. Mm-hmm. You make your Pokemon battle? What else would I do with them? What kind of Pokemon lovers would be, be if we made them fight? They have to fight to evolve, or just stay little and cute forever. Have these people never heard of Everstones? Nope. Well, no, because at that point they didn't exist. I mean, they also said that... Mew didn't exist. Yeah, true, but at the same time, items I kind of feel like are different. Yeah, he wants to cuddle with the Pikachu. Yes. I'm thinking the Pikachu's not having a, the best time. Yeah, Pikachu just kind of sits there, especially the guy's holding Pikachu by its underarm. Yep. And Pikachu's just kind of droop there like, ah. 
I don't want this. Yeah, he's going against his will. Why is the old man touching me like this? He's he's loving me too much. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Red doesn't know what a Voltorb is. It's Pokemon. Red doesn't know what a Voltorb is, and in the anime, it's like one of the first things you see <laughs> with the alarm clock or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but that's Ash. Yeah. Ash knows what a Voltorb is. Red doesn't. People who are like, the Pokemon manga is good because Red isn't an idiot. I'm just saying. I, I like the manga way more, but I just want to leave that there. Yeah. Well, Red is more of uneducated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ash is a little, slightly a bit more book smart, but like, that's because someone gave him the book. <laughs> so, we get to Lieutenant Surge and his cannon with Voltorbs as ammo. Yep, although, the, here, there's a couple things here. When he brings out the Electabuzz in chains, one, what are those chains attached to? Two, this is a mean one. Can't even get it into a Pokeball, but it makes a perfect guard dog. One, guard dog. Two, it obeys him despite not being in a Pokeball. So this is, for all purposes, a wild Electabuzz. Assuming it's not like Ash's Pikachu, where it just doesn't like the ball. <laughs> but the, the, he seems to imply that because it's a mean one, they can't do it. Luxury balls weren't invented yet. Yeah. <laughs> so when they're on the run, great work, Poliwhirl, just like when we were little and we we're always escaping from bullies. Red? What? It's... Do you have a tragic <laughs> past you're not telling us about? She does. I, I like to imagine that it's just blue and green and they're like, pick... <laughs> blue is like up. picking on them, being kind of like... Ooh, you like me. You have cooties. And then Blue's just playing into it. <laughs> well, Green would have had to have been under five years old. So uh, Red has to basically play Metal Gear Solid for a little while with actual metal. I had the same note. Metal Gear Magnemite. Yes, yes, that's what your note was. Oh, you took the note from me. Okay, Miss no, Plagiarist. Well, no, I just remembered uh, that when you yeah. said that. The other day, listeners, he was um, saying that he didn't remember why he had that in his notes. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, it predicted Snake's appearance in Smash Bros. Brawl. <laughs> the same game uh, Pokemon Trainer came in. Yeah. Surge thinks that tossing a water type overboard is threatening. I mean, they're fairly high up, but not to the point where it would be like an automatic kill. And you gotta imagine... Weren't there like idea. some sort of... Po wasn't there like another type of water Pokemon in the shark, like a shark or something in the water? Or am I just imagining things? You must be imagining it, or probably confusing it with something later on, because this okay, just has fair enough nothing there. So then we get to like the sickest moment in the manga. Well, hang on, hang on. Surge then throws Red over in the same spot. At least taking Red over to the other side of the ship would have put some distance in between the two. Anyway, yeah, I agree. This is a great moment here. This is where... the best moment in the volume? Mm-hmm. When uh, Poliwhirl evolves into Poliwrath after realize after the flashbacks of all the great memories he's had with Red, and he's like, er, this isn't it. I'm gonna go evolve. Uh, Red is the one having the flashback. Uh, yeah. I kind of took it as both of them having the flashback at the same time. And the exact same thing happened. And then Polyrath jumps something like 100 feet into the air, back onto the deck. Before we move on from that, though, I want to say this is a lot like a... I, I know uh, only one of you have seen it, but the fourth episode of Pokemon Origins, I like this moment more than the Mega Charizard evolution. Yeah, moment. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and also, as... um. As Red is being shocked in the whole uh, Magneton triangle pyramid thing, Surge, he either snaps his fingers or hits the rail um, yeah, as he's like signaling for them to just throw Red over. The sound effect it has is fat. No comment. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, so... Polyrath is up on the deck, trying to square off with Electabuzz. 
And Serge goes, I uh, think I left the bathtub running. And then he also does Grolic's cursing. At least I assume that's him and not one of the Pokemon. I mean, if anyone's going to curse, it's going to be Serge. He, well, I mean, he does. In this very comic, in fact. Like, you know, m- most of the characters are just saying normal cussing, but you know, this version of Lieutenant Serge is doing the slurs under those... <laughs> <sighs> the reason they have to censor them is so, like, they Nintendo doesn't have to deal with uh, his bad PR of, you know, throwing racial slurs in a kid's manga. <laughs> <sighs> but then, um, to, in the anime, um, if you watch the Japanese episode, he goes, God damn! <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, uh, he beats Surge. Does he? Wait, is that now or later? That's uh, oh, you mean what he says later? Does he get the gym badge now or later? Later. Um. Well. Uh. Goodness, let me. It doesn't even say anything about the badge here. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. He wouldn't have so, any way of knowing that Surge is a gym leader either. I don't think he gets him like white later. The ba- the next badge takes a while. Yeah. Yeah. So here, um, when they're arresting the sailors, um, this is the first time we've seen police officers, isn't it? Yeah, I think there are just not a lot of people who want to be police officers in this world. <laughs> What's this? Your poly world? Did it evolve into this poly rat? Yeah, but it's still cute, isn't it? Little poly world. There's my little Abra, tell me the truth. Where, where, where? Well, you see, your little Abra evolved into a great big Alakazam. And the guy starts freaking out. And it's just kind of like, talk about fickle. You know, he basically claims to love this thing more than anything. And yet, because it's, because it evolved, he doesn't seem to care anymore. The Pokemon fan club guy is literally just Gendo Ikari. <laughs> Wait, no, that's Lusamine. Never mind. With an even worse, with even worse facial hair. Well, he really needs a shit razor for shave <laughs> oh, impacts. Golly. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> so yeah, now can we get to the bike race? Yes, yes, we can. Yes. So. This manga has filler, and a lot of people say the Pokemon anime is bad because filler. But this what I like here filler. is the most of it isn't filler, I guess. Because yeah, it's Snorlax. There's another chapter later on that's filler. Yeah, yeah, there is some. But I I feel like this is filler adjacent, basically. Yeah, it kind of is. Because it's it's only like the last couple pages that aren't filler, but like yeah, you get a lot of great comedy here. It's the thing about filler in this is. They're really short. They're not 20-minute episodes. They're just as long as they need to be. Yeah. I really want that first prize. I even paid a 30-smacker entry fee to get into this race. Okay, Red, that's like 350 USD. He's an 11-year-old kid. <laughs> how, how much money is he going to have? But uh, during the bike race, the one note I have about it is... uh. Constant use of moves to get around obstacles is, like, really cool, and I want to see more of that in Pokemon in general. Yeah, yeah. And just the end, when the Snorlax is chasing after the food, destroying, like, the everything around it, is, like, Snorlax. Uh-huh. Now, um... All we need is just for it to shoot Hyper Beam from its eyes, and it will be the best Pokemon. <laughs> so, um... Red just kind of rides his bike directly into the water and then has Polyrath make a bridge with Ice Beam. He wasn't even out when he did that. Did Red did Red take it out of the ball or did the Poliwhirl just realize what was happening? Well, it just he just kind of jumps into the water with the bike and then next panel it's out and doing Ice Beam. I'd like to think Red just wasn't thinking and then the Poliwhirl's like, oh no, I gotta stop this. <laughs> Yeah, because Red was already making a splash. He was physically in the water. 
they've already bonded that much that he knows that, oh, we're going in, need Polyrath, go do your stuff. <laughs> they're the mental link. But yeah, he basically just dominates the race the whole way through. Nah, swimmers don't actually swim, they just sit on shore and look at the how ridiculous. You see, swimmers don't know how to swim unless they're only doing it in a square. Or in a line. Red tries to get Snorlax to eat Bulbasaur. <laughs> He's using him as bait. It's, it's pretty weird. And Bulbasaur is spending the whole time like, I am not comfortable with this. Why have you <laughs> forsaken me, father? <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, this is just pulverizing Pancake, like, decades before that was a real thing. Yeah, yeah. That's the one with the uh, Alolan Raichu and the Pancake race, right? Uh, no, pulverizing Pancake is Snorlax's move. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, now, <laughs> although, now we're getting into the worst pun. Jeez, is this Lavender Town or Leave Him There Town? That's not even a pun. I mean... I think the joke there is, is it's a cemetery. Well, no, it's, he doesn't even know it at that point. Trying to get someone's attention and everyone's ignoring him. I, I thought it was like a dark joke, but I guess not. It's it's like the debate over uh, why did the chicken cross the road? It's the ba debate of is it an anti joke or is the other side meaning it? No, so I did when I was uh when I was visiting Hawaii. I did see a bunch of chickens crossing the road. There's wild chickens everywhere. That's ridiculous. Oh no, the chocobos. Fuji has to fight for attention here, because in Adventures, uh, Blaine takes most of his spotlight. Yeah, true, true. So, uh, do we have anything to say about Fuji, or...? Well, he just kind of buried Doduo in a random place. He buried him in an alley, because, like, oh, we can't reach the tower, let me just bury him randomly off in the street. He says, if I, only I could let my Pokemon rest in a proper place instead of a weed-grown alley. Does that mean he's intending on digging it up at some point? Maybe. Do you think Pokemon have normal graves, or do you think they put them in Pokeballs first to, like, make space for graves? Well, do you remember in uh, Fire Red and Leaf Green, at one point, um, in one of the islands... You see this thing that looks like a stack of rocks sticking out of the ground, and this guy says they buried his onyx. Oh. Apparently that's oh the boy. end of its tail. Huh. Well, yeah, if these Pokemon are going to be rising out of their graves later. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> well, yeah, but usually that's not so, you know, Literal. usually they have to rise out of the grave. Right here, because you, ha you have an onyx, right? Its tail is basically a tombstone. It saves a lot of money. Tombstones are ex are expensive. <laughs> or alternately, just, you know, you were talking earlier about its horn slash crest oh, slash yeah, whatever. Yeah. Can we skip to uh, when Blue shows up in the tower? Yeah. He ran off to the tower to show up our foolishness. That was two weeks ago. He hasn't come back. If Blue's been in there for two weeks, how is he alive? He's a ghost. <laughs> ghost powers. Ghost powers. Technically, there are things in there that he could be eating, but they are not things I would recommend eating. Look, ghost powers means he doesn't need to eat. <laughs> that is how this works. So, uh, He's temporarily undead. I want to point out something really interesting about Blue here, because as I've mentioned, I love what they're doing with Blue in this, but, uh, okay, so one of you haven't seen past episode one of, uh, Origins. Can I give a minor spoiler? Yeah, go, go. So, uh, in Pokemon Origins, uh, when Red meets Blue in the tower, Blue gets scared and runs off, which is, like, the opposite of what Manga Blue does. <laughs> or Game Blue, for Well, that Game Blue doesn't know there's anything, like, about Ghost or Cubone's mom being in the tower. It just implied Blue just isn't aware. No, Blue's there for his Raticate. <laughs> poor, poor Radicate. No, here, here's the thing for you, though. I mean, I know everyone says that, but it's just kind of like, you know, he's the his grandson of basically the town veterinarian. Of course he's going to be familiar with death. But um, another thing uh, about uh, Origins, how exactly did Marowak 
die. We're led to believe it's because that guy hit it on the head or something, but one that was a very thin rod. I don't think that would be strong enough to break a finger. And two, the rod was electrified, and Marowak would be immune to that. You see, that's just how they captured it. They don't want to show you the on-screen polka death. So Red only goes into the tower in order to show up Blue. He's wondering, so Blue is missing. The guy's personality could use some improvement, but as a Pokemon trader, he's the real deal. He doesn't go down easy. So what could put him out of action for two weeks? He doesn't go in to look for him. He goes, I'm not running away from a challenge that he took on. I'll find out the truth behind those ghosts. Not even looking for him. I, I think he thinks that Blue st isn't still in there. Yeah, but he does muse that he's missing. Yeah. Then we get into what people remember most about this series, which is the rotting zombies. The zombie Psyduck reminds me of what they did to movie Psyduck in Detective Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I feel like so many people have been like, ooh, top 10 scary Pokemon moments, Pokemon zombies, and the Mongo. Is there anything we can add beyond what everyone else has said? Well, I guess for one, it's they're not actually zombies, they're more being controlled, but... Also, there's two Lickitungs in there, and Lickitungs are really rare. The concept of the Tangela here, though. Um, remember how Tangela's... Actually, there's quite a few of those as well when it does the wide shot. The concept of Tangela has always kind of come with nobody knows what's under its vines. Once they're dead, you'd think people would be able to figure that out. Maybe it's just a dark void they can't see. <laughs> Maybe it's just, it's just vines, under vines. It's like a black mage. Well, this purple haze is what's controlling those zombies. One, insert guitar riff from Purple Haze here. Two, it shows that they have some degree of independent thought despite being dead. Maybe they are zombies. <laughs> they probably are like yeah. some sort of zombified, like remains brought back from the dead. Well, because they seem to have empty skulls, which would mean that their brains have rotted away. They shouldn't even have any motor control, and they're being used like literal puppets and marionettes. Yeah, but if they have, like, souls. Could like, be, but if they were just souls, they wouldn't really have a physical form. Well, they still have, like, their bones and stuff, and that's ghosts, voodoo, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> if you give a robot a command to go up, and you just never stop the command, then even if you're not controlling it, it's still going off that one command. But, like, you can't give it, you can't, like, give it new commands until it comes back. There's only one Pokemon I know who can take over bodies like this. One gas Pokemon with psychic abilities. Gas Darkrai! Oh. Wow. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> but what about the rise of Darkrai? They're rising from their graves. So, join us next time where, first of all, I have an important apology to make. I'm sorry, Kelsey was definitely totally listening to this. We did not pass you guys yet. I thought we would. Hopefully, next time we'll we'll do uh, two volumes. Uh, I have one more question. Did you two have fun, and do you want to continue? <laughs> Absolutely, on both counts. Yeah, it was good. <laughs>